What is up, everyone? Azaro here, and welcome to um, a video that is a response to Atlas's comments on the people that will be doing live streams and making YouTube videos for um, pardon me for uh, Persona 5. Um, Persona 5 was a game that came out earlier this week. And prior, or I don't know when the information was dropped or when Atlas made these comments, but pr it was either prior or following soon after the release of Persona 5. Atlas um, made comments to the people who would be doing live streams or uploading footage to YouTube or doing any type of playthrough of the game um and making videos of the game you know for the world to see um and the comments weren't necessarily good so i have an article here which i'm going to be reading from and you guys are going to be able to see it as well uh on the comments that atlas made and the reason why i'm calling this video a response instead of like a rant that i'm pretty sure i don't really pay attention to what else is happening on youtube but when information like this leaks, or when this when information like this uh, comes about, I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised if many other people have already commented on this. But the reason why I'm not calling this a rant uh, and a response because this isn't some knee-jerk, angry, um, spazzing, you know, video. You know, this isn't done without some thought, and you know. And some well explained reasons why this is stupid. Not why I think it's stupid. Not why do I think it's stupid, but why it is stupid for, for, uh, for Atlas to say these things. And I'm going to be giving some thorough explanations and uh, making some interesting points as to why um, the comments you're about to see that Atlas made are, in fact, you know, improper. And they don't really hold any merit. It doesn't really make any sense why they feel like that. I understand why they feel why, why they feel the way they do, but at the same time, it's stupid. And I mean that with all due respect, but it needs to be said. It's stupid. So without further ado, let me uh, bring up the page so that we can read this. So right here, I am on a website called polygon.com uh, and the one who reported uh, these notions. Actually, this was posted on the Atlas website. Um, again, following either before or following the release of this game. And uh, the person who created this article, whose name is right there, Allegra Frank, um, basically uh, gave their take on what Atlas uh, was saying. They basically um, brought attention to what Atlas had uh, said. So as you see right here, the headline reads, Atlas warns Persona 5 streamers not to spoil the game. If you do, Atlas may take your heart and your YouTube channel. So let me just just uh, skim through it and give you guys, I guess you would say like the meat and potatoes without beating around the bush too much. As you guys know, I don't really like to do that. Um, Atlas had you know, has issued some strict streaming and video content guidelines for Persona 5 players going so far as to threaten content creators with account suspicion, suspension, if they fail to stick to the rules. Simply put, we, and this is Atlas, um, um, speaking, uh, simply put, we don't want the experience to be spoiled for people who haven't played the game, the publisher wrote on its website. Our fans have waited years for this game to come out, and we really want to make sure they can experience it fully as a totally new adventure. Um, and they also put some guidelines as to what they want to see. Uh, players are, are only allowed to show gameplay up through the early July portion of the game, with the cutoff set at July 7th. Anything they upload is limited to 90 minutes in length, as well as those videos don't show, as well as long as those videos don't show any big boss battles 
or ending dungeon fights. Um, you know, all of these things are all technically ass on Atlas Park, not hard and fast rules. The Persona fans want to show off as much of the game as possible, or let's be damned, that's their prerogative. But be warned, all warned though, that Atlas is happy to hit anyone caught throwing off parts of Persona 5 that wants to keep obscure with a copyright claim. Um, if you decide to stream past July 7th, I highly recommend they, you know, the, the person who wrote this article, I highly recommend not doing this. You have been warned. You have, do so at the risk of being issued a content ID claim or worse. But channel strike slash account suspension, the publisher explained. So, basically, um, they've already been doing this because the game was released up in Japan last fall. And apparently some people from Japan have already... Now, I can understand them getting hit with uh, copyright strikes, but... Mm. And... Well, I, I guess as far as the article, we can go back to the uh, the picture. Um, As you see, Atlas really wants to keep the content of Persona 5, you know, under wraps. They don't want people showing it off. Um, and they don't want anybody spoiling the game basically now here's why this is stupid now first off you know they mentioned that you know they want people to fully experience the game for themselves which is understandable you know I, I think at at their heart every game developer wants that you know they don't necessarily want um but they want the experience to be brand new for the people that play the game um the games and for especially for the case of Persona 5, a game that has been delayed that a lot of people have been asking for, um, and to finally get it, you know, I think them being the creators that they are, they want people to have a genuine experience with the game without the risk of anyone spoiling it for them, for, you know, anybody else, which is understandable. You know, I can understand it. You know, I can understand it. You have some people who... You know, when a new movie comes out, um, they don't want anybody to tell them about the movie or even, you know, anything um, at all because they want it to be a complete experience for them when they go see the movie for themselves. They don't want to be told nothing about it, and they basically just want you just to shut up. And I can understand, you know, taking that logic, they're applying it here, and I can understand that. But here's why this is stupid. Um, on top of the fact, you know, they said that they don't want you playing the game uh, past a certain point, as well as the videos only being 90 minutes. You know, first off, nobody's going to upload a 90-plus minute video. Uh, well, I guess these days they might, but I can't really see anybody uploading a 90-plus minute video of Persona 5, not unless they just trying to do it through the game, I guess, like chapter by chapter or like dungeon by dungeon or like however they have this game set up. Um, because I'm currently playing it myself, so, uh, they may be doing it dungeon by dungeon, which may take, you know, over 90 minutes, but still, um, people are more likely to upload the game in like 15 to maybe in 30 minutes at max, um, because I think that's how many times, that's how long a person can, you know, watch a YouTube video, the average person can watch a YouTube video in one sitting. Um, I think Atlas kind of missed the point of what this YouTube community, as far as the gaming community goes, on YouTube is about. And not only that, but I think they also missed a couple uh, points, which is why they're saying the things that they're saying. First and foremost, speaking for me and people like myself who've been playing video games since, and in my case especially, I've been playing games since a little kid, like since the Atari 2600. And over the years of you playing video games for so much on damn near every system or have played them on every, on every system uh, known to mankind, you end up developing a certain niche for video games. I'm talking about every genre of video games, be it adventure, RPG, or fighting develop a certain niche and you can pick up on things a lot quicker 
than the average person who more times than none may not be as savvy with video games as you are. And you have people who actually can figure out the puzzles in games and, you know, be helpful. Hence the reason why they make videos like how to videos, um, you know, showing how to get around these tough spots in plenty of video games or in the case of fighting games, you have people who, you know, when a new fighting game drop, they can pick up on the new combos, you know, just like that. Um, and they don't have to read a guide or online or anything. They, they can just figure it out for themselves because they're just that savvy, you know, when it comes to fighting games. And the same thing for, for people when it comes to RPGs, such as Persona 5 and many other games. But you have a community of people within the gaming community that need help when it comes to certain parts of video games. And YouTube has become that that go-to place for people to get the answers that they seek when it comes to, you know, being, you know, when they can't get past certain parts or they get stuck in a certain area or if there's some hidden uh, content or like some hidden items somewhere that they may need when when it comes to the upcoming boss fight, you know, that's what that community is there for, to help other people out. So, when, especially when it comes to boss fights, which, you know, you, I just showed you, Atlas doesn't want you to show um, any boss fights, basically, um, when it comes to this game. So, or at least any ending boss fights, I should say. So you're basically building up, you know what I'm saying, like pretty much like throughout your playthrough, you're building up to like this big boss fight and you can't even showcase that experience to the viewers who were probably looking forward to seeing that as well as getting help with trying to beat the boss themselves. You know, not everything that is obvious to one person is going to be obvious to somebody else. So they may have some trouble getting past the boss and seeing a YouTube video as to how to beat a boss just may be their way of getting around that hump. Because if it's been people who've rage quit it and just left games alone because they couldn't get answers or they couldn't find a video to help them get past a certain point in video games. So it's kind of difficult to sit here and say that I agree with Atlas on you know, this decision that they're making, or rather, this warning that they're putting out, um, it, it's, it's hard for me to, you know, sit there and be like, okay, yeah, like, I can understand that, and I can agree with that, you know, you know, I'm backing them up on this, it's, it's hard for me to say that, so, that's one thing that doesn't make any sense to me, two, um, when people are playing a game, it is hard you know, especially when they're liking the game, YouTube, again, has become that place where you can showcase that experience. Um, because people enjoy seeing the experiences of others when it comes to playing video games. They wonder, you know, are you going to have the same experience as I did? Or do you have a different take on the game? You know, what's your experience with the game? Like, let me see how you play it. Maybe it can help me out. In, in, in a way, it kind of goes back to what I said before about you know, being helpful um, when it comes to video games, I guess. But nevertheless, through showing other people, you know, how you play the game can give them a different take on how they're playing it. And maybe if this game has any uh, replayability, which I'm pretty sure it does, um, they can play the game again using your methods and, you know, vice versa. And, you know, you're giving them an interesting take on a game that they may never have thought to play a game like that. So, um, it makes no sense that when you start a playthrough that you can't finish it. You know, it just doesn't make any sense. Because when you're playing a video game and you're having a certain experience with it, you want to show that experience from the beginning to the end. And that way, if you do a review of the game, at least there's visuals 
that they can go back and see, you know, the videos from the playthrough that you just played. Um, they can go back and they can watch it. They can understand if you have any gripes about the about about the game or have any um, comments you would like to make about the game. They can go back and watch the playthrough and they can see, oh yeah, during this time, I can understand why you felt that way. So that's another part that doesn't make any sense because if I can only play this game up until, or if I can only share that experience and excitement up until a certain point in the game, that's basically saying that I can't, pretty much I can't showcase me finishing the game um, with the people who were looking forward to seeing it. Because they do have people that are looking forward to see the game themselves. Now, I understand, I understand, before I make my final uh, comments on this, let me say this. I understand their point as well, even though they probably didn't say it, like, I understand what they're, what they're doing. Um, and let me say this before I speak on that, too. It seems like they're kind of trying to use the fans as a catalyst. Just tell people, hey, don't, don't, don't spoil our game. It's almost like they're using the fans as an excuse to say these things. Uh, it's almost like they're trying to use the fans as an excuse to say these things. So it makes no sense why they would try to bring the fans up. If you don't want people to play a game past a certain point, don't sit there and try to use the use your you know the, the fans as a as a means to try to say it. You know, don't try to hide behind them because you don't want people you know spoiling the game, quote unquote, as you say. Um, because there's people out there put articles out that are going to spoil the game, even though people may not pay attention to them as much as they do a video. Yeah, people that put pictures out, articles, you know, they have people out there that will absolutely spoil the game, or at least that's their goal. Um, and I understand, you know, I somewhat understand business, and I get that they feel like this is going to... Um, you know, if it ruins the experiences, then it ruins a possible sale in a video game. So if somebody uh, sees, like, the spoilers for a video game like Persona 5, then they may be more reluctant to buying it because if they see what the game has to offer and they don't like it, then they want to you know, then they're not going to um, go out and purchase it for themselves. On the flip side of that, which is what a lot of gaming companies figured out, you know, a long time ago, that if people do see, uh, if, if especially if the company is very confident in what they produce, then showcasing that game is basically like free marketing. And, you know, it's free advertising. And the game ends up gaining notoriety. And there's been plenty of gaming companies that go, have gone on record to say that they want to see playthroughs on YouTube because they understand that it's free marketing. People get to see, uh, you know, a little, you know, see as much of the game as they want, as well as, you know, if somebody's going to buy a game, they're going to do it regardless. Regardless if somebody shows, a, shows it in a video, they want to go and experience it for themselves. Because they may have an interest, they may play the game differently than you did, and which goes back to what I said earlier. Um, you know, it really goes about it goes on about experience and what you do um, with that experience. So I understand how they feel like it may ruin sales, even though they didn't say anything. I'm pretty sure that did cross their mind that if the game gets spoiled for people who want to play it themselves, then obviously they may not go out and and, and they may not go out and pay for it um, to buy it when they can just watch it on YouTube. Like I get that. Like I'm not oblivious. I'm, I'm not. I'm not biased. Like I'm, you know, like I understand their their side. But at the same time, it's it's very stupid. You know, it's very stupid. Um, and lastly, let me say, regardless what somebody puts online, you can't you can't stop somebody. Um, from watching something that's online. On the flip side of that, if you, let's say for example, well, let me say it like this. If a new movie comes out, right, and 
you make a video doing a movie review and you know everybody knows it's a new movie and as you're doing your review you in that video you're explaining everything about the movie that you liked and what you didn't like um, and, and you're going into thorough detail things are going to get spoiled you know like regardless but it's that viewer's choice to take that risk. Regardless of what I put in the video, if nobody's watching it, then obviously it didn't get spoiled for them. So my thing is this. I understand that you don't want the content online, regardless if it's past a certain point or just period. If you don't want the content online, um, because it risks the game being spoiled, that's up to the viewer whether or not they want that information to be, you know, seen or not. It may be there for them to see if they want the, you know, but YouTube videos are completely optional. They don't have to go click on the video to, you know, see anything. If they don't want the game to be spoiled for them, then they won't click on the video if they're that, you know, adamant about the game not being spoiled for them. You know, just stay off of social media in regards to Persona 5, then, you know, then they won't have any problem with spoils. But I think the, just looking at it, the good outweighs, outweighs the bad, the good being actually sharing the game. I think, you know, there's more to benefit from sharing this game than not sharing it. Again, the game is going to gain notoriety. I mean, Persona 5, the, the Persona series, is already has a massive fan base as it is. Um, you know, from Japan to America and other places around the world that are able to get their hands on this game, you know, it's developed a big fan base. So it's not like people don't know about Persona 5 unless you're just never into it. But um, it has a pretty solid hardcore fan base because they understand how good these games are. And people are going to want to see what this game has to offer. So again, understanding that YouTube is the place to help people um, get past certain points that they may be stuck on. Because um, it may be a point past the July 7th date that they said that they don't want people showing that people may get stuck on and they just may give up and just stop playing the game altogether. They may return it because it, it, it may be too difficult for them. They may, you know, it's, it's always a chance, you know. And as I was saying earlier about, you know, you're worrying about a game being sold or, or not to spoilers, if people return the game, I mean, obviously you can't really count that sale because that, mo that money that they spent on that game is going right back to them. You know, it's going right back to the consumer that bought it in the first place because they weren't able to get help. They weren't able to get help on the game past a certain point. So I think it's kind of I, I think Atlas, they were just looking out um, you know, for themselves, and they kind of using the fans as an excuse. Uh, like, you know, again, they were using the fans as, as an excuse. I don't think they really cared if people spoiled the game or not. It's just that I think they are artists at what they do, and I do say the word artists, I mean that as respectfully as possible. Um, I don't think um, I can say that in a negative way. Uh, but I understand they are artists at what they do. And as an artist, you want to re reveal certain things to the world with the way you want to reveal it to them. And part of that may be you don't want certain details about what you created to be, you know, spoiled for the viewers. But again, it's that is all based on what the viewers um, want. If 
if somebody wants to, a video about Persona 5, they know that there's infam- there's certain things in the game that's going to be spoiled for them. So they're willing to, to take that risk or they're willing to watch it in order to get help with whatever they need help with. Um, so... That's pretty much my take on Atlas's response. Um, I don't, uh, so please forgive that rattling. It's my laptop being, you know, like it's old and it's rickety right now. But so I do apologize for that. But, you know, I, I think Atlas, you know, I think, you know, honestly, I think they're just being divas about this whole situation. I think if they truly understood what the gaming community is on YouTube, they wouldn't be doing this. Um, But then again, I don't think I've ever known a company like Atlas to be understanding about what's, what's really going on here. And they're just, like I said, they're just being divas about the situation and they're not, you know, pretty much which, ironically enough, they're being spoiled brats about the situation, and they're trying to use the fans as an excuse. So I don't think they are, they've really thought this through. Um, I don't think it's necessary to hit people with a bunch of copyright strikes and content ID matches and things like that and threaten people to, you know, with account suspensions and things like that. Um you know, Persona 5 is a game that I think needs to be shared, as well as many other games that we're going to be seeing in the future. Uh, it's just something that um, I think it's shared with the intentions of helping people and giving people an interesting take on a game that they may not have a take on. You know, and that's just what playthroughs are in general. You know, that's the time that we're in. Um, and I hate to say, I, I hate to say that because it almost sounds disrespectful in a sense, but you know, that I get with the times. People in these days, when they're playing a video game, they're doing it. You know, for some people, it's actually a job. You know, they've actually taken something they love to do, or something that was a hobby, and, and in my case, something that I got in trouble for because I used to do it before I, you know. You know, before I did my homework or anything like that. But, um, as far in, in playing video games, I'm talking about. But, um, people, they enjoy sharing those experiences with others as well as help them get past whatever area they may be stuck in. And it's hard to do that when when you're only allowing people to play the game up to a certain point. And even then, you're making restrictions on what they can and cannot show. So, I mean, your game, your rules at the end of the day. Me, I can live without playing an Atlas game. You know, I mean, I've already boycotted, well, I don't want to say boycott. I've already put Arc System Works on strike because uh, of, of a dumb copyright claim mishap that they did that they refused to correct. And I haven't played, bought, or even mentioned Arc System Works probably before today. In that, b- between that situation and now, I never even brought Arc System Works up because of that situation. And they have not gotten another dime from me. And if I'm going to have to deal with this same nonsense from Atlas, then it's sad to say I will not be purchasing another Persona or Atlas game, you know, in the future, because I cannot risk my channel um, because they decide they want to act like babies. I mean, this is, you know, for a lot of people, this is turned into their livelihood, and for you to say you're just going to pull the rug from underneath people because of that, it's kind of abysmal, but like I said, your game, your rules, I'm not going to say and tell you 
what to do. I mean, like I said, I'm small time. I doubt this video will get up any type of notoriety at all, but I do think that the way that Atlas is looking at this is pretty idiotic, and it needs to be, well, not think, it is idiotic, and it needs, and they need to get to a round table, and somebody with some common sense needs to get in their head and let them understand that, hey, you know, people are playing this game, you know, regardless of at any point, it, it's not a bad thing, and people shouldn't be getting, you know, hit with copyright strike and content ID matches and all this other stuff uh, because of it. You know, people will play this, will play games these days um, because they want to share those experiences with others, and YouTube is the place to do that. And if we, unless people can do that, it's like it's hard to, in, for some people, it's hard to enjoy a game. Um, because they're so passionate about helping others through certain parts of the game, it's like when, when you're threatening people to, you know, to lose the method of of sharing. Then it's like, you know, it's it's just one of those things. It's just a big mess, and I, I didn't want this video to go on thirty plus minutes, but that's just my response to. Atlas's live stream uh, comments on Persona 5. I, I'm i trying to find out if there's anything that I can do as far as the people that are watching this on my channel. Uh, the game is already played. You know, I have the video footage. I'm just trying to figure out what I can do to avoid any nonsense with Atlas. Um, and you know, these videos I'm, I, I plan on uploading because if I can't upload the videos or I'm at risk, you know, for some of you who may not know, I just signed a contract with Machinima, um, you know, because I announced that I was going to be signing a contract with uh, with another gaming company. And, you know, my channel is on the up and up now, so I got to be extra, extra careful with what I do. I can't really be careless in uploading just anything, especially from a company who doesn't want that type of, who doesn't want their video game, uh, um, live streamed or to be shared. So it's a tough thing. I'm gonna just say this: if I do start up, when I do start uploading the Persona Five footage, it's because I'm seeing signs of things, um actually turning out positive rather than negative. So, or rather there's not a risk of me losing my channel when I upload this stuff. So, that's all. So, thank you guys for watching this. Uh, spread the word about this video. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Until then, you can watch me on Twitch uh, playing Persona 5. Um, I guess up until that point. Uh, if I hear anything else, I will inform you guys. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later.